Madam Speaker, Madam Vice President. No president has ever said those words from this podium. No president has ever said those words. And it's about time. President Biden acknowledging a first in our history. Two women, Vice President Kamala Harris and Speaker Nancy Pelosi, sitting behind the president as he delivered his first joint address to Congress tonight. We're continuing on from ABC News with live coverage of this solemn occasion. Certainly a lot to discuss of President Biden's first joint address to Congress. So here to share some insight on this evening's address is a speech expert. Dino Pape joins us. He's with the National Speech and Debate Association. Dino, great for you to be here. It's a pleasure to be with you again, Stephanie. So what sort of challenges uh, do you think the president was facing with his speech with all of the dynamics that are happening in our country right now? Well, he really had to accomplish two things. He needed to demonstrate empathy, which is something that he's been known for, uh, regardless as to which part of the political spectrum you come from. You can recognize that he really does connect well with people and shows empathy. And the other piece is the unity piece of it. He tried as best as he could in a very divided political climate to try to find attempts to reach out to uh, across the aisle and develop some political unity. She looked at me and she said, it's like every shot is giving a dose of hope. All right, we do want to get your take on a soundbite. Uh, the president uh, talking about former President Trump's tax cuts. Let's take a listen. The big tax cut of 2017. Remember, it was supposed to pay for itself. That was how it was sold. And generate vast economic growth. Instead, it added $2 trillion to the deficit. It was a huge windfall for corporate America. Okay, so you know, clearly we know the country is very divided on many issues. Is this the president's uh, subtle way of, of trying to still differentiate himself from the past administration? I think that's a big piece of it. And the other piece of it is that a lot of the opposition that he's received to this point uh, has been that it's uh, too expensive, that it's going to cost trillions of dollars. And to be frank, he has three major proposals, uh, two additional ones on the table, which do amount to trillions of dollars. So he has to be able to demonstrate that there is a willingness to be able to, uh, to pass this, to be able to have the money available. Uh, and so he's trying to go back to that, that particular time period and say the money is available if you would pass the legislation that I'm trying to press forward. And of course, we know the president's party has a slim majority in the House and the Senate right now and, and very you know, slim support in the country as well, like we said, with it being so divided. So how did we see him take advantage of that slim majority, try to capitalize on it? Well, the biggest factor, of course, is that he said we can we can pass it without you, but he wants to uh, and really strives to be able to bring others from the Republican Party uh, forward. Uh, one of the things that he repeatedly said is come forward to pass this legislation. Uh, if you don't like what I have, come back with something better. Uh, but let's come to the table and actually act. He repeatedly said, we need action. We need to step forward. We need to be able to accomplish things. And he even gave an example of something that is sort of a softball move in some ways from the Senate. But he talked about how it was nearly unanimous, uh, the passage of the Asian American and, and Pacific Islanders. Uh, to make sure that we don't have any more hate toward that particular community. So that's a good example of how you can unify if you wish to do so. And of course, uh, Republican Senator Tim Scott was delivering the, the response, the GOP response. Let's listen to a soundbite from him right now. Party are pulling us further and further apart. Okay, so they did talk about that great division and, and the GOP chose to capitalize on that. So what was the strategy there? I think the strategy is to appeal to the voters who put them into the position that they're in. And so as a result of that, um, you have to play to that base of support. And that's exactly what they were doing with the Republican response there. 
All right, Dino Pape, as always, we appreciate your insights, and especially in a year like this, which is so unusual. Um, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much.